Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Legacy Wealth Talk, where we can all be open to important conversations regarding various topics related to life transformation, love, happiness, well-being, relationship, and wealth. My name is Nomsa Clara Mnude. I am the founder of Hope Spring Eternal Introduction Agency and the co-founder of Legacy Wealth Talk. I have four experts today um, with me, Tarini, our resident panelist, uh, Jason, our, Jason Camp, our resident panelist, and uh, Shezat Hanif, our resident panelist, and I have uh, our guest panelist list, Dr. Biget Tan. Uh, I'm going to let our experts introduce themselves. Also, they can lay out their professional credentials expertise. Uh, over to you, Biget. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, um, Namsa, and thank you, thank you, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you. And uh, I'm Bridget Tan, and I am a certified grief specialist and a certified life success coach. And I'm also a veterinarian oncologist. And um, my, my specialty is in helping people thrive through changes and tough times and have peace of mind and win with more ease and fun. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Biget. Over to you, uh, Shazad. Uh, thank you, Nomsa. Uh, my name's Shazad, Shazad Hanif. My friends call me Shez. And I'm the uh, founder and lead coach at Guidance Coaching. And we specialize in helping people find their purpose in life so that we can then connect them with a mission, which will allow them to do something that they love and earn a great living at the same time. Uh, thank you so much, uh, that Over to you, J uh, Jason. And then, Nomsa, thank you for inviting me along again. Uh, I'm here every single week, as you know. So my name is Jason Kemp. I'm an NLP master practitioner, NLP trainer, and a certified hypnotherapist. And what I do with my life is help people improve their lives by helping them get out of their own way, get unstuck, and become the best version of themselves. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Jason. Over to you, Tarini. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tarini. I'm an entrepreneur and also a property developer. I help parents and entrepreneurs and also working professionals like doctors, dentists, nurses, and police to build their legacy wealth through property investments so that they can regain back their time and make the better use for their cash saving and able to set up and pass on the legacy to their family and make sure that their, their family have a better possible life in the future. Sorry, I've unmuted, oh, sorry. Thank you so much, Tarene. <laughs> so our topic today is how to find peace in uh, times of ad adversities. Um, this is a very, very um, powerful topic. So I'm gonna, let's just uh, have fun, everyone. And uh, where is Big Head? Where am I? Oh, you're there. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go to the next page too. I, was, I thought you were kicked out by the internet. So you're okay, that's fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to start with you, um, uh, Biget. How do we find peace? If anyone wants to comment on what she says, guys, please feel free. How do, how do we find peace in times of adversities? Thank you, Numsa. So a couple things. First of all, it is uh, it's to expect. It's actually when, th when there is an adversity, there are things changing in our life. And sometimes we didn't even realize it's an adversity until the aftermath. But when, when there are things changing in our life, we want to expect to, um, for ourselves to not feel normal. You know, Viktor Frankl says abnormal behaviors or abnormal feeling in an abnormal our unusual circumstance is completely normal. So we want to actually expect to, to not feel normal. And it actually yeah. will help us to have peace of mind 
for one reason, if, if things already are changing and we feel rattles or we feel concern or we feel sadness or uneasiness, and then we're expecting ourselves to feel normal <laughs> the way mm -hmm. it, when things not happening, we're actually adding to ourselves an extra stress. It's like yeah. you already have to cope with the change and now you what, you're pushing yourself to be in certain way, which is actually mm -hmm. become abnormal. It's what's normal is for you to feel abnormal. So the first thing is I would say to kind of expect the rattles, um, mm -hmm. I, I call it the rattles inside. It's like, okay, this is happening and, and I'm feeling this way or that way. That's normal. And actually when you're expecting them and you're allowing them, then things just flow very smoothly. Let's say you're like, oh my God, you know, um, my, uh, I, I got to move. And you expect that you will be a little bit perhaps discombobulated for the first week or some people the first one. And that's okay. And then when you allow that to expect that and to allow that to happen, and we, we feel uh, uh, more in the flow instead mm -hmm. of going against the flow, um, just like with this COVID-19, we like, yeah, when everything shut down, I'm like, okay, I expect everything's going to be unusual and abnormal and it just make it a new normal and we'll be able to flow with it better. And then also to, be, uh, to expect to be different. Uh, when things changing nonstop, just like with a lot, um, at least in here in the United States, I'm based in Los, uh, near Los Angeles, things like going this way and that way and this way, and it's like everything opened up, whoops, we're going to close back down. Oh, and this is one partially open, you're like all over the place. And so we can expect and allow ourselves to feel differently each time. It's um, back, back, uh, allowing and expecting, allow ourselves to feel differently. It, we might feel this way and we feel, okay, we're just okay with that. And the same thing happened the next time and mm -hmm. we feel completely different. And that is completely normal um you know our feelings are like fingerprints we're not making ourselves right or wrong just like our fingerprints are not right or wrong but they are different and with different combinations of moments and times and thoughts and everything they're always different you know if, uh, i don't know if you ever uh, ever look at your fingerprints um we know a lot uh, everybody every single person has different combinations of fingerprints but if actually you look at your fingers, each individual fingers has a slightly different print as well. And mm -hmm. so that's just kind of telling us that it's normal to be different from moment to moment, even if it is you, you're facing the exact same thing, you know, um, everything closed down the first time, you, everybody's like, ah, and everything opened up and then closed down the second time, you will have different feelings. Mm -hmm. um, and so to just expect and allow that to, to be hap uh, happening. And then the other thing is to, um, for me, for me, one thing to be helpful is to not try to bury things, not try to kind of push it away or burying things away when things are happening, but actually to allow ourselves. I was um, doing a, a, a talk the other day and I was using the analogy of a roller coaster. A lot of time with life, it's like we're going on a roller coaster, right? Sometimes we go down and sometimes we go up and we go down and we go up. Hopefully you don't move uh, you know, through your life as fast as the speedy roller coaster. But life is like a roller coaster. So you go mm -hmm. down and up and down and up. And, and the, the difference is with life, we cannot choose to be on a roller coaster or not. We are on a roller coaster of life. But at the same time, if you notice people that's on, on roller coaster, the one that usually come out all pale and green and look like they are they're going to faint, many of them are actually not only they don't enjoy the roller coaster, they just sit there and going instead of they sit there and scream. If you see people that actually have fun on a roller coaster, even as it's going down. And in the de depth of it, they, a lot of people usually going scream. And so I, I say, you know, when things are happening, when there is adversities, we're talking how we have peace of mind and adversity to actually scream, 
Now you might physically scream. <laughs> there are actually biologic benefit for actual screaming, but to at least express yourself, express your feelings, whether it is crying, whether it is screaming, whether it is writing, doing whatever it is that works for you to be expressive and not stuffing it in. Because when we stuff it in, um, feelings uh, uh, will just mutate into something else. Sometimes even to illness, to physical things. If we, you know, like if you you really pushing it in and then you might start having heart palpitations or headache or something uh, and then to also trust the journey mm. trust the journey Steve Jobs say we can always connect the dot looking back but we cannot connect the dot looking forward and most of the of us in here cannot see why things are happening um, with COVID-19 who knows why things are happening and but we know just like the, the Steve Jobs who's really wise says we cannot connect the dot looking forward so just trust the journey everything has a journey in itself and so we we want to trust the journey and say okay I can't see why this is happening in my life, but maybe perhaps there is a lesson here. Mm -hmm. uh, the Chinese character for, um, of, for uh, adversities uh, is actually two characters. The first one um, means danger, and then the second one means opportunity. So there is a danger, there is a problem here, but what is the opportunity that might be hidden in this? And um, Napoleon Hill says, there is a, a seed of greater good in every, every, every adversity, every heart, every failure, every heartbreak. And so what is the possible seed of good? And actually when we are able to be, to focus on what's the two thumbs up outcome that we would love then it is something that we in, we allow us our mind to move forward and take the one little step at a time forward even if that little step is getting out of the bed that day um, then we can at least have something to be focused on. and then the other thing that I would say the last thing is to, not to um, not to uh, uh, be a lonely ranger you know, um, a lot of time we, we have something challenging and then uh, we like, okay, we got to figure this out and we got to tough this out. And, and of course, we, it's, if it's challenging, it's challenging to go through it on our own. We, just like if you have a, let's say, a very happy uh, box or something that you want to live, then uh, it's a lot easier if we have somebody that can help it help us with that. So, so you know, find a, a trusted friend, a coach, somebody that you can be a shoulder to cry on, as well as having a camaraderie. And not only that, even more importantly, a lot of time the other persons can help us see things from a different angle, right? A lot, uh, if we're the one in the picture, so um, you know, this is a COVID, it's a global thing, but at the same time each person has different situations. And so sometimes when we're in the picture, we can't see the whole picture, mm -hmm. but somebody from outside might be able to say, well, okay, you know, this is the challenge you specifically having. And perhaps, just perhaps, what about if you do, you look at it this way and look at it that way, and then we'll be able to have, um, if, uh, you know, the, uh, different perceptions about it, find a different way out of our situations. And so, so those are a couple things. And um, I would say one last thing that I find helpful when there's a lot of things going on like this is to allow, uh, to, to kind of temporarily disconnect. <laughs> um, I actually don't have a, um, a, like a TV channels in my house. I have two TVs, but I don't have like cable channel in my house uh, because I just don't want to be bombarded left, right, and, and front and back by the same news over and over and over again. All right, we know there is, you know, um, um, there is in, in this area, um, certain time, like in, in the next couple of months, we're going to start fire season. This is just a different example. And when there is fire, the news nonstop, there is fire, there's fire. Well, you already know there is fire. You're being evacuated. What else is going to be? Would you like me to come back to you, Big uh, yeah. Bigot, for a minute? Yeah. I need to hear uh, other people's opinion as well. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. Uh, Sherzad, over to you. Thanks, Momsa. 
thank you, Birgit. There's some great, uh, some great uh, nuggets there that you shared uh, with us. Uh, I like the, uh, I love the uh, quote from uh, Napoleon, uh, Napoleon Hill, um, who is one of uh, my all-time uh, great uh, favorite authors. Um, so yeah, I would just really kind of just echo and reiterate what Birgit has said, um, and maybe just put my own kind of take on it. Um, with regards to adversity and attaining peace, um, a quote of uh, Bob Proctor comes to mind. Mm. Um, he said, uh, in any difficult situation, I'm paraphrasing here, um, in any difficult situation, uh, there's three questions you need to ask. Um, and the first one is, uh, what's the good uh, in, this, uh, in this situation uh, mm. that I'm in? And the second one, and I might have got the order mixed up here, um, the second one is accept the situation for what it is, right? This is, I mean, this is absolutely gold. This is absolutely gold, really. It's like you can make this your blueprint for life. Um, and the third one is ignore the rest, right? So, like, you know, accept the situation. Actually, I think probably accepting the situation is probably step number one. Mm -hmm. And then take the good from whatever. That, I know you, and we can look at COVID. We can look at, you know, the, the, the racism situation that is really, you know, um, be, you know, become a worldwide issue. It's always been an issue, but obviously because of the, the, the tragic situation with George Floyd, um, you know, it's, it's really being highlighted at the moment. Um, but yeah, it would just, I guess, you know, my response to your question, Lomsa, would be just encapsulated in those three questions. Um, so I've kind of uh, answered your question with, uh, with three questions. How's that? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I like the, I like Bigget's idea as well. And your idea with the racism is actually, is amazing because how do we find peace uh, or, or through adversaries like you are mentioning the racism. I know everyone has created this um, uh, you guys are mentioning Napoleon Hill. Mm. So when everyone, when I saw the slogan of uh, Black Lives Matter, you guys are going to have to forgive me. When I saw this slogan of Black Lives Matter, I read Napoleon's book and I was like, this is not right. We shouldn't be saying that Black Lives Matter because mm. white or black or Chinese, every life matter. Yes, but exactly. when you read Napoleon Hill, the, the, the devil, uh, is it outwilling the devil, the book? He says, actually, when he interviewed the, de the devil, he was saying, he, the devil was saying, I use human beings to actually give me what I want. So then I realized, actually, I am not getting involved in this Black Lives Matters. I need peace. But then I need to cry out for the judgment for the families that have lost their lives for them to find peace. That's the right way to do. F cry out for judgment. That's it. I'm not saying if my life matters, I need peace. I don't want to be seen. <laughs> so I was like, I'm not doing that. And I even told my pastor when he was, when the church that was talking about Black Lives Matters, I was like, I don't agree with this. It, it doesn't, it doesn't sound right. Yeah. So over to you, Jason. Um, how do we find peace in times of adversaries? How do you find peace? Well, the first thing you do is be yourself because it's okay um, following the crowd and being sheep. But we've all got our own personalities. We were born to be unique. We were born to stand out, not to blend in. You know what's ironic? High visibility jackets were designed to make people stand out. But what have they actually become now? When you think about it, what's it actually turned into? It's actually turned into camouflage. Because you can't identify one person now amongst the rest of them because they're all wearing high vis. The point of that was to spot the boss, was to spot the person in charge. They haven't got a clue now because they've all blended into one big yellow mess. How to identify the person? So the irony thing is the fact that was there to stand out has now become one big thing and you can't pick it out. And you know, we're not processionary caterpillars. So there's a story about processionary caterpillars. They put them in a Petri dish around a flower pot, basically. So they put a plant in the middle and they were going round the edge. And all their job is to follow the person in front. And that's its job. Follow the bloke in front, go round and round the pot. And then after a few days, they realised that these things weren't eating anything. So they put a pile of pine needles in the middle of the pot all they had to do was break rank and go to it. It's a few inches away. 
and they wouldn't do it. They just kept going round and round. So because they wouldn't establish their own identity, every single one of those caterpillars ended up dying. And the food was just there for them. It's crazy. And yet, as human beings, we often we often can fall into that trap of just following what everybody else is doing. How can you be peaceful with yourself if you're doing what everybody else in the world is doing? Peace starts inside there, inside your own heart, inside your own spirit. It's yours. It's unique to you. Nobody in the world can tell you how to do it. Not a single soul can tell you how to do it. You have to look inwards. We all spend our life from the outside in. Well, I challenge all of us to live our life from the inside out. Start with yourself. Start with those feelings, those emotions and senses. Because there's a, there's a saying in NLP, perception is projection. What you perceive is what you're already putting out into the world in the first place. So if you want more peace, put more peace out there and you'll pick it up in your, in your neurology. If you want more love, put more love out. If you want more money, put more money out there. It's about giving. You contribute first and you receive afterwards. That's the phrase, isn't it? You reap what you sow. You don't sow what you reap. You know, you don't get a farmer say, where's my crop? What did you plant last year? I didn't plant anything. How do you expect something to grow? Yeah, he has to put the groundwork in first. He has to go and plant the seeds in the cold winter whenever he's planting the seeds. And then, and only then, can he go and harvest his crop. So peace and everything, every single thing in the world starts with you in the middle. And it's what you make it. Thank you, Jason. And I, I've just noticed your thing as well. It says your way, uh, your own life. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. You, you basically find peace within. Uh, over to you, Tamini. How do we find peace in times of adversities? Um, how do you find peace in time of um, adversity, especially now, you know, since the lockdown as the entrepreneurs and property developers and the business women think we face a lot of financial difficulty maybe you are you know for my example there's many tenants that cannot pay their rent because they lost their job you know the job that they've been work closing down there's many many people face financial difficulty at the moment how are we going to find peace while we struggle? I'm going to echo from what Bridget and, and Chester mentioned before. First, is human being to react to stress, to feel the way you feel, worried, fear. But we also, when we accept it, like Chester said, you need to accept it as it is, not to put more things to it. For example, um, I have one property near city airport that the tenants haven't been able to pay my rent since March and my mortgage is, for example, a thousand pound a month. So that's what I dial every month, a thousand pound a month for this property. So it is as it is, it's down a thousand pound a month. It doesn't mean that I'm going to go on bankrupt. It doesn't mean that, you know, my children going to be taken away because I cannot feed them the child support going to come because sometimes when you have a small problem not small problem when you have a problem when you work out stress out you start seeing a problem bigger than it is so what i normally doing it <clears throat> i put it in on the paper i putting it like okay this is what i worried about okay what what it is then in terms of the facts right <laughs> no, sir. i'm very detached person i'm very practical person so i write down as it is this is what i fear of okay what you fear of write it down then i fear that this is my problem that i doubt a thousand pound a month how long can you survive with less thousand pound less a month okay maybe six months then i have to find other income to coming in or what other resources that I can come in to solve my problem or who should I contact to helping me to get out of this situation when you break down right break down what are you facing either in relationship in business in finance it's not as overwhelming as you thought it is and then you have a better clear and also when you know like one of my solution is to contact the lender and remortgage so my payment will come down. And I knew that 
this would take me about two months, um, two months to get the whole process done. So because I write down, I knew the time scale. So every day during that two months, I'm not going to like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And once you're in that state of mind, everyone around you will, will take on that energy, isn't it? So mm -hmm. instead of you have peaceful mind for two months, because you knew that you already do things that you're supposed to do and it's coming on your way that the problem going to solve itself out. So you, you buy your peace, basically. Otherwise, you're going to be so wide up and then your children going to receive all your anxiety, people around you, and you're going to make everything around you and yourself, you know, chaos. So seeing things as it is, don't get, you know, wide up easily. Write it down, you can see it black and white and bring people in approach and ask for support there's many many people there to help you that's that's my take on how how you find peace through financial difficulty because it's useful oh. to be a, a um what's the word you get um, independent you get dependent and you get interdependent and it's good to be mm -hmm. interdependent dependence is one thing where you rely on somebody altogether completely and then you've got in independence where i'm all on my own but interdependence is when you're sharing ideas and communicating and collaborating with other people. Yes. Because that builds your strength. And um, they say that if you have two people, the sum of the two mm -hmm. together is better than the two individuals on its own. It's like three people working yeah. rather than two. It's just mad how it works. Definitely. And I think also in terms of business or even relationship, it shows that you are a human being, isn't it? Because sometimes when you see on Facebook, on any social media, you think, whoa, this girl uh, have everything sorted. But when you share your problem, they can relate to you more. And people will look, okay, how you get out of your adversity. And once you show them that this is the way, they will follow you. So it's also work on your benefit as well by sharing your problem. Yeah, it helps everybody, doesn't it? Yeah, I think that's a great, that's a great shout actually, Tarani, about writing things down. Uh, it reminds me of one of my uh, mentors, Kai Hock, who's the lead coach for um, Tihar Becker in uh, Asia and Australia. And uh, he, he, he really talks about this a lot. He says, whenever you've got a fear, mm. and I think obviously with this COVID situation, you know, there has been a lot of fear, right? So he says, whenever you've got a fear, get, get, just get a pen and paper, yeah. draw, a, draw a line down the middle, right? And list that fear and then look at the pros and look at the cons. You know, ac accept it for what it is, you know, look at all the, the disadvantages or the problems and then say, right now, how can I, you know, how can I move forward? He, and he says, choose at least one action that you can take, write down one action that you can take that will start, you know, taking those small steps to help you get out of that uh, problem. And you gave the example of the repayment there where, you know, you can look at maybe remortgaging or, yeah, you know, yeah. borrowing some money. You're taking that step, aren't you? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, thanks for that. that that's, uh, that reminded me of uh, Kai. So I thought I'd give uh, Kai Hawk a shout out as well. Hi, Kai, if you're, if you're watching. Thank you so much, guys. For me, basically, I, I, I was laughing at Tarini is because she says she writes everything down. For me, I have to implant it in my mind. And when I implant that specific thing in my mind, like I have a problem, this is the problem that I have. It has to be in my mind all the time until it is sorted out. Hmm. And I take out the expectations from people to meet my needs because sometimes when you have problems you are surrounded by family you are surrounded by friends if you put expectations for your friends to to come as a solution then you you'll be disappointed and you end up focusing on uh, uh, hurting your friend blaming your friends that you didn't come when i needed you and blah 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 the list go the list goes on so when i take out the expectations from the flesh because i know that if i put the flesh on tarini she's my friend she's not going to give me joy she's not going to give me hope <laughs> instead what i do is i see things as they are like you guys are suggesting this is the problem that i have and then i have to go to the universe oh god and i say you say if you seek you will find it. this is the problem that i'm i have i'm facing please send
Now you freeze. <laughs> maybe that maybe that's the universe's way of way of telling Omsa she needs to she needs to move on to, to the next speaker. Bridget, you want to take over while we've got a freeze on Nomsa? <laughs> sure, absolutely. <laughs> that's funny. But yeah, I, I love what everybody's saying. And it sounds like we're echoing similar thing, you know, like yeah, Jason yeah. says, be yourself. And um and and uh, you know, with you, Terani, you write things down, and Numsa need to implant it in your head. Mm -hmm. And so we're all different, yes. and we can expect to be different. Mm -hmm. And just be what do do what works for you. You know, we can all share different things, and some people do both. And and I kind of uh oh, Numsa disappear. <laughs> uh, you know, like with me, I write some of it down, and then mm -hmm. um and then I then process it in my head back to um to you, Jay. Um, you mentioned Bob Prachter earlier and the, the writing down technique. Mm. Um, the other thing that helped when we are facing adversities um, as well is to uh, Bob, um, Bob Prachter uh, shares to write it down, to write down in detail it, it, using bullet points. So it's not mm -hmm. a story, but it's just the fact, yeah. right? Yeah. This is the fact, facts, facts, facts. Mm. And then um, look at it from multiple different angles. He would put it in the middle of his dining room table and he said, okay, I'm looking at the problem from, from this angle. This is all I can see is problem and I cannot see solution. What about if I come and actually look at that paper from this the, the, a different angle and he goes around like at least four different directions if, if not eight different directions to kind of just shift his mind and be able to see it differently. And the... Um, and also um, allow, like you say, to, uh, uh, tyranny, to, to disconnect from it, allow mm -hmm. ourselves to be objective. Because a lot mm -hmm. of time, like you said, uh, we have something and then we start mulling it in our head. And then it's uh, something that's that big suddenly become that big. Yeah. And you're like, ah, and then you cannot it's think. Crazy. And then, yeah, and then you're just on the, in this spiral mode of having things, uh, you know, um, having your emotions running you instead of us being a master of our emotions. And so, so to disconnect from that, to disconnect from if you, if you you do that and you continue being bombarded from things mm -hmm. out there, try to disconnect from that for for at least a little time. Um, you know, limit yeah. your exposure time to TV or something like that. So, so that's the yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I got Sorry, a Jason. Disconnection is very important. I've got a technique I can share if you want to about disconnection. It's really good. So you've got yeah. a what? Sorry. Disconnection. Disconnection. Disconnect yourself from the problem. It's really good. So if you are in a problem at the moment, you know what you feel. Your emotions are there, aren't they? Because you're in the problem. If you was to, however, leave yourself where you are and take, say, three or four steps behind yourself. So you're looking at yourself, you're actually dissociated or disconnected from the you with the emotions in. How do you then see, what can you see that person doing? How can you see that person of you behaving? You know, maybe you've gone to the side a few steps rather than behind, so you can see what's going on. So you're over there. What do you see the you doing? How do you behave? And you'll notice if you just do that, you'll notice the emotions are not as strong and not as good. So therefore, you've got a clearer mind. There's no trees in the way of the, of the forest. And you can then analyse the problem, as, as Bridget was just saying, from different positions. It's getting out Excellent. of your head. Isn't yeah. there a, Jason, isn't there a specific technique for that in NLP? Is it anchoring or something where you kind of rerun a really, you know, um, traumatic situation in black and white and you run it from back to front? And So there's a few techniques. The, mm. One of them is called perceptual positions, which is where you do what Bridget was just saying. Look at the problem from multiple angles. The other one is what you're talking about, um, shares is called uh, the fast phobia cure, and it's designed for that purpose. So if you've got a traumatic event, you can run it backwards on, on a black and white TV, and then you can change the submodalities, the, the, the qualities of that picture, that image, the sound, make it quieter, make it Mickey Mouse, make it cartoony music, you know, make them have big floppy ears um, in the scene. So what happens is that doesn't no longer have the same emotional charge anymore. Um, so you've taken the thing that was a problem and you've literally scrambled it. You know, the old fashioned records, if you get a raw CD, if you get the record or CD and then you get a nail and scratch across it and play it, it doesn't sound the same. If you keep going, at some point that will never play again. Yep. You have to go and yeah. buy a new one. So that's how we, we can associate Sorry. the problem and destroy it. Excellent. Excellent. Is Nomsa back with us? 
Yes. <laughs> we, 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 we've, We've got you in 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 uh, visually, but I, I still we can't we still can't, can't hear you. I think, yeah, or maybe the. I don't. I don't know why. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, there you are. You were talking I about the universe, know. and the my universe took you out of the. Was, uh... My internet is very strong. I've extended it double, but it kicked me out. I'm not sure why. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so did I miss anything exciting? Oh, messy. Really. <laughs> Yep, you missed uh, some golden nuggets from Jason about some uh, NLP techniques dealing with uh, how to deal with certain issues and phobias and stuff. So you'll have to watch the replay. Okay, definitely. I always watch the replay. Cool. Excellent. I, um, I want yeah. to share how I normally detach myself with the problems. For example, this housing tenants not paying money. What I doing after I write down, then I identify the step that you know, to get me out of the problem. I see myself as the CEO of my life and as the CEO of my business. So mm -hmm. I find who going to solve this problem and I identify two people. One is a state agent to make sure that they kick the existing tenants out and then get the new set of tenants who can pay in. The second one is the broker who need to find the lender that will remortgage my property. So once I identify these two key people to get me out of my problem, then I delegate their responsibility to get me out of my problem. Then you just follow up on them. So the pressure is not on me. The pressure is actually moved to them. So that's how, how you're doing it because you see that you choose the right person that can help you in any angle of your life. Then it's there. I'm normally said I trust you that you, you use your, you know, the best knowledge and ability to do your work. <laughs> so that's the pressure chief. That's how I do it. Yeah, brilliant, excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Tarimi. Uh, why speak it? Still here. <laughs> so how do you maintain your own peace? I mean, uh, Karini writes down and uh, she gives someone else's responsibility. <laughs> it's, so, it's so amazing to hear different personalities, uh, how you guys solve problems and everything is like it comes and fall into place in one. Yeah. So you were asking me how I maintain my own peace? Yeah. So how I maintain my own peace, and this is whether there is problem out, uh, or there are you know sit, um, significant changes out there like COVID or in, in this area I mentioned earlier, we have fire <laughs> that come every fall that needed evacuation most of the time, uh, or just day-to-day -day basis. Uh, um, actually, a couple things. And one of the um, most important things is I use what I say, the, um, the power of perceptions. So, you know, whether it's a situation out there, actually, or even as we are interacting with people, you know, like in a relationship or something, um, we, we, meant, we talk to somebody at work or something and we get into a disagreement, here's the power of really, uh, the, the perceptions, or I, I call it using the beach ball here. <laughs> so so I, I like beach ball, I live in California, right? Um, uh, but, you know, if you look at this beach ball here, if you come in looking at one direction here, and let's say this is a huge giant beach ball and you are up front to it. If I ask you what color you see, you will see if you can only call out one color and you're standing here, you can only see red. Everything is red, everything's a mess, everything making you anger, angry. But at the same time, whether this is a situation or let's say you are speaking with somebody else's that make us upset or something, and the person says, no, I don't see everything red, everything is wonderful. Well, if the person were to stand on this direction here, all they can see is blue, or perhaps the, the person can all, the only thing that they can see is yellow and bright and wonderful. And so to use the, the, power, uh, the, the beach ball for us to be able to, for two things, understand that if somebody has a different uh, uh, look on some things um, than we do, there is no reasons to get upset. Even with, when things out there, your one neighbor might say this about, um, you know, the COVID or the, um, 
just like the uh, you know the the uh, injustice. One person might see it this way, and a different person might see it the different way, and we see it the different way, and it's okay because nobody's right or wrong. Everybody's actually right. It's just a big. Uh, uh, everybody seeing a different slice of a whole big picture. Back again to Steve Jobs, we can't see the uh, the big uh, things move looking forward often, but it might be a whole big picture that we all see each differently. So to, to use the power of perception, and if it is our round problem, um, I mentioned earlier when you were uh, when you were out, Numsa, but Prof. Thor teach us to look from multiple different angle on one piece of paper to to allow our perceptions to look at it differently. Differently, multiple different perceptions. And then the other thing that with me is to do gratitudes, to do gratitudes on what feels good. And because that will allow us to back to disconnecting and detaching from being swallowed by the problem and taking a step back, like you say, Jason, uh, you know, when you do gratitudes, you're like, okay, at least I still have a roof over my head. All right, I still have clothing. <laughs> I'm still able to breathe without a machine, and then it will uh, um, take us from being, uh, you know, being in the mix of the problem and just take a step back and say, "Okay, now I have a little bit clearer mind and a little better energy, and can look at this in a different angle." So that's the two things that I use for myself um, uh, on day-to-day -day basis. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'd like to hear more from Sherzad. Yeah, I think absolutely. Thank you for that, uh, Birgit. I think it's all about routine, isn't it? Um, you know, for me personally, you know, I like to do certain things repetitively, um, which, you know, really help me to get me focused, get me centered. Um, so one of those things will be having uh, like a gratitude routine that uh, Birgit uh, touched upon. Um, so, you know, every day, um, you know, or more or less every day, uh, frequently, you know, I have a routine, it's literally 10, 15 minutes where, you know, it's, it involves moving and breathing. Um, one of my original mentors, uh, Chris Wally, who Jason knows very well, um, you know, he always used to talk to me about and still does about breathing. Whatever situation I was in, he would say, you know, breathe, because we're, we're not, we're not conditioned to breathe in the right way. Um, so I have a, like a, a, you know, a morning routine where I do some breathing and I share this with all my clients. It's like a gift I give to them whenever I have a session with them. Uh, so breathing, moving, a little bit of walk or a little bit of exercise, deep breaths into the nose, out the mouth, um, and then doing some visualization, um, actually doing some gratitude first, thanking uh, the, the universe or God um, for all the blessings in, in my life visualizing things that haven't even happened yet um, and expecting that they're going to happen. Um, and then the third component is really just doing some strong incantations while I'm exercising, just, you know, just really um, uh, retuning my brain, uh, rewiring myself, you know, that I can achieve a lot of things and telling myself, um, uh, you know, about things that I used to think I was really weak in um, and, you know, reassuring myself that I'm strong in those areas. So I think having daily routines, um, you know, and some people will call that um, priming. Some you, know, you can give it whatever name you want. Some people like to do journaling. It really, you know, depends on the individual, right? You know, someone like Jason will have his own techniques that he's learned, in, you know, in his NLP journey, uh, which I'm sure that he uses on a, on a regular basis. So, um, yeah, for me, just having that daily routine and just growing all the time, you know, if you're, if you're not learning stuff, if you've spent a day has gone by and you've not learned something, new, uh, you know, increased your knowledge, um, then, you know, really it's, it's time that's, it's, you know, time's your capsule and, uh, you know, it's not going to come back. So I think i um, just trying to, you know, use my time in the most positive way as best as possible. We're human beings and we all have our little uh, you know, quirks. Um, um, you know, we all sometimes get a bit sidetracked with life, but um, I think daily routine is really, really important. And just, you know, having some kind of routine, whether it's five, 10 minutes sitting in quiet and just reflecting on life um, and, you know, just thinking about all the things that you're grateful for, um, or writing things down or just going for that walk in nature. Um, but yeah, I like to do, you know, be a bit crazy and shout out all the things that I'm grateful for and, um, you know, and then just kind of, uh, and it just helps me to start my day in the right way. Um, and also at least 10, 15 minutes of some positive motivational knowledge something which I can really you know, kind of uh, use in a positive way. 
Thank you so much, uh, uh, Shezad. Uh, um, I do that with you. I have my daily routine from, I get up at half past five. From half five till 7.45 is me time, meditation and prayer. I need peace. I cannot be disturbed. My door is shut. Basically, I'm just meditating. And wherever there is a problem for me to find peace, it's knowing that, like what Shaza is saying, use your own beliefs. And for me, I'm a Christian. I have to tell myself that God is on my side. And I refuse to accept people's assessment of what my life should be. Or I have to seek. I, I have to seek to be to be led to the promise where my to the promised land with my name on it. And I, I have to trust and I have to believe. I have to do my uh, gratitude and I have to have compassion and that is give me peace when I use compassion, beliefs, gratitude and trust and also I have to do the work. I cannot expect miracles to bring peace to me. I have to do the work, like what Tarini was saying, writing things down and seeking people, help me, help me. And for me, first, I have to ask the universe because I don't want to waste my time with people that are not going to help me. I just say, please, good energy, bring me, just give me that mind, bring me the energy that is going to help me. And then I will just have to pick up the phone and say, please, this is what I, this is what I'm going through. Can you help? me with this and what I do is I tell my I have a one friend that is for me that person is a role model they are not gonna they're gonna tell me things as they are I need a, somebody that is gonna tell me things as they are not gonna tell me things that I need to hear or that is gonna make that is gonna make me join the feeling sorry club I just want that person that is gonna say no sir see things as they are so I can find that peace is is very very nice and useful for you to if you like you believe it and trust uh guys is there any um jason is there anything that you would like to leave with our audience um if i was to leave anything at all today i would say um start searching inside live your life inside out um, sounds funny, but it's actually really, really important that we live our life inside out. Um, find peace within yourself, find love within yourself, find everything you need inside. And of course, there's people like myself and other coaches like Shares that are able to get in there and rip you out from the inside because that's our job is to turn you inside out so that you do you, you do the best version of you. So if you need to help being turned inside out, come and see me or Shares and we'll sort you out. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jason. Yeah, you do you do sort us out every Saturday. I do attend your hypnotherapy where you talk about the ice cream. Will you take us to a journey? <laughs> yeah, I've got to, I've got to attend one of those actually, Jason. I don't yes, know. and uh, one of it, one of uh, uh, a guest on the show, he he actually fell asleep. We stayed there to see how is he gonna, how long is it gonna take him to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Over to you, Shazad. What would you like to leave with our audience? Yeah, I would just say, you know, just really, just be positive. Um, you know, get get accountability partners around you, people you know who will challenge you, who believe in you, make you you know feel positive. Um, you know, like Jason was saying earlier, you know, you are the sum, uh, or you are the average of the people you surround yourself with. Um, so you know, if if you can't find people in your immediate circle, you know, there's now, especially with COVID, more than ever, there's there's people online that are willing to help. There's free programs, there's workshops. Um, you know, we've got um, uh, you know our panel of experts here at Legacy Wealth Talk. You know, we're all um, here to serve, um, and each one of us, um, you know, offers free sessions to our audience here as well. So, um, you know, you can reach out to us here. Each one of us brings unique skills. Um, you know, Jason has um, a lot of experience with mindset growth and you know, how to kind of get out of your own way, like he says. Um, Tarani, you know, she's a, a, you know, an expert in the area of investment, uh, property development, you know, she's a wealth coach in her own right. So, um, you know, a real wealth of experience. Um, you know, we've got, we've got Nomsa, you know, who's got um, a wealth of experience in the area of relationships. And, you know, she's been on a journey herself. 
um, you know, we, uh, she's been through so many different things. We worked together in the early stages when we first started Legacy Well, so I know a little bit about her journey. Um, and um, yeah, and obviously we've got Birgit here as well. So this is my call to action to everyone, I guess, is that we've got experts here. Uh, you know, Birgit is a, uh, you know, she's a, she's a doctor. She comes from a medical background, I believe. Um, so, you know, absolutely has, you know, um, a wealth of experience. And you can tell that by some of the, uh, some of the gurus that she mentioned when she was speaking, some of the quotations she made that she knows her stuff. So, um, yeah, really, I would just say, say just reach out for help. When you reach out for help, um, you can take your life to the next, next level. Because ultimately, um, you know, like Tony Robbins says, if you're not growing, you're dying. Um, and, you know, this life is very precious. Um, they, you know, we, we, we have no guarantees. Um, so we've got to really try to live, you know, passionately, live positively, um, and, you know, really try to strive to be the best version of ourselves. And that's, that just, it's ongoing. That really is an ongoing journey. So that would be uh, my message really, you know, Michelle, I guess. Thank you so much, uh, Shezat uh, Biget, Dr. Biget, anything you'd like to leave with our audience? Um, I would just say, you know, um, to remember that we will not see a nice, beautiful rainbow if we don't have storm. So if we might be in the middle of the storm, but if we keep taking one little step, baby step at a time, uh, and, and look up from time to time, well, we'll eventually the storm will end, every storm end, and we'll see a beautiful rainbow. And thank you for um, mentioning um, that, that uh, my background. Uh, the other thing that um, as a resource, um, in addition to this as well, if you want to um, check out my work further, I actually have a book talking about peace. The book is called Seeking Peace that is available on Amazon UK, Amazon US, any, any, whenever there is Amazon, this is this book here. And it talk about the different things that I share and actually touches on all the different things that, um, that all the panel says as well. And so being yourself and everything. And so um, that will be also a resource that, you know, if you wake up at two in the morning and, and it's like, ah, what am I going to do? Um, check it out as well. And of course, call the, the panel in here. We, you have a wealth of resource here. I'm also available for um, complimentary consultations on the phone or online, even though I'm in the US. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Can I, sorry, can I just mention one thing? There's a lot of people now that are coming out of this lockdown um, that are really thinking about their life and what direction it's going in, because a lot of people realize that life's not going to be the same anymore. Mm -hmm. So what I would say that this is an opportunity. This really is an opportunity now to grab hold of someone, a coach. I mentioned, obviously, we're offering free sessions as well. And look at those problems in your life and how can you turn those into opportunities, whether it's, you know, you want to become a property developer, whether it's you want to, you know, salvage a relationship or get out of a, you know, a relationship, or maybe you want to understand yourself better, your own mindset, you know, we've got Jason who can help with that. So really, I would say is that honestly, this is the time to reach out and to use this, this uh, lockdown period or the post lockdown period, which as we're coming out of it now, to really thrive um, and hit the ground running, um, and in that regard, you know, with, with you know, we're, you know, we're definitely here um, to be able to help you in that in that uh, journey. Just thought I'd mention that. Mm. Thank you so much, Itarini. Anything you like to leave with our audience? What I like to leave with the audience and everyone here is just to have faith. Everything happened in your life for the reason, and normally the reason is always good. We might not see it, we might not appreciate it now, but it's for your own good, right? So when things happen in your life, don't resist, don't fight, just saying, bring it on. Is that all you can do? You know, what not kill you, make you stronger, and you find a way to handle this situation when it's come round again. It just another learning curve. It's just another thing that is happened to your life. Same like we just said, everything come and go. That's not thing last forever. So just enjoy your life and go with the flow. Whatever throwing at you, it's just part of the experience. It's just part of the life. It's nothing to be sweat about. Just enjoy it. Mm. Thank you so much, uh, Tarini. Um, basically, um, God, you speak like a strong Christian. 
<laughs> I like I like I don't put this actually, but I like I like a woman, I like a woman who is very strong, who has a strong mind. Normally it's men. I like a woman who has got a strong mind. Um yes, you have to when when things are going wrong in your life, you don't respond to the feelings. Just um respond to that positive power. Bring that positive power to your life and say negativity not now i agree with you tarini uh, i used to respond to how i was feeling but now now that i have worked out how the universe work i'm like no i'm not going to respond to the negativity bring it on so that is really really helpful and having trusting and believing and having gratitude knowing that things will be sorted out like tarini was saying when you think that uh, everything is going wrong. You don't know what the universe is doing behind the scenes. So just have to keep going and believing, but don't wait for miracles, take action. It's very, very important. There are so many coaches here that are willing to give 30 minutes a free uh, session to help you find a way with your life and together you can find a, a way. So get in touch with them if there is someone who is listening and uh, if you are worried that people are gonna know about your problem, guess what? This is life. We all have to, professionals are there to help you. They are, they are, they are not just there to sit there, they are there to help you. If you want to talk about problems, it doesn't matter how big or small, we all the same. We are professionals. We have we get problems, but the the difference is we can seek help. If I have problem now, I know I can I can contact Shevat, I can contact Jason, I can contact Tarini, I can contact Diget if I if I have problems. It, it's just having that step to say I, I really need help. And that is the most uh, beautiful thing that you can do for your for your life to bring peace. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you next week. Live with grace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay blessed, everyone. Take care. Bye. Peace. Yeah.